God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll continue our study in the 18th chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke. In our last session, we read down to verse 17. Today we'll begin our reading at verse 18. I trust that you have your Bibles with you and you will study along with us. Uh, as we read verse 18, And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 19, And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good except one, that is God. And I, I'm amazed at the humility of Jesus. And, and we have it recorded in Scripture, and I believe it with all my heart. Jesus did no sin, and there uh, was not gall found in his mouth. So, so if anyone lived a perfect life, it was him. But yet his humility uh, wouldn't accept uh, this compliment from this man, if you please. He said, Why callest thou me good? None is good except one. That is God. Can you see Jesus and the humility that he had uh, pointing that the, the true good one is God himself. Now, now we know through our study and we know through reading that, that Jesus is the son of the living God. Uh, he's God made flesh, if you please. And I will, I will prove that and uh, talk about it further when we're studying the gospel of St. John. Uh, but, uh, uh, so I, but I'm amazed now at his humility. Why callest thou me good? Uh, none is good except except one, that is God. Thou knowest commandments. This is Jesus as he continues to talk to this, uh, this young ruler. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. Jesus quoted the commandments. And uh, uh, we will take time in a future study and go down the commandments. But Jesus, this is what he was trying to get over to this man. Uh, he talked about the will of God and the commandments of God. What really pleases God? And uh, this young man said to him, he said, All these things I've kept from my youth. In so many words, he said, I've already, uh, I I'm already doing what you just asked me to do. Uh, I keep the commandments of God. So you have to understand the Torah was taught. Uh, uh, we have the New Testament scriptures and uh, also the Old Testament scriptures that we can read. Uh, but just like you go to church and hear uh, the, the preacher preach or you have a Bible to read, in the Old Testament they had the Torah. And they also went to synagogue to where uh, they heard the word of God. They listened to scribes and they listened to the Pharisees who all uh, uh, was much like uh, I'm standing here teaching you the word. Word of God teaching you uh, now the New Testament scripture. So the, the people in that area, the Jewish people in that uh, this time, uh, they knew, uh, had a basic knowledge of uh, what the Torah was saying, or what the Old Testament scriptures uh, were saying. And, and so this man said, I, I've already do this. I, I know about the commandments and I've kept the commandments from my youth. Um, in verse 22, now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, uh, Yet lacketh thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou, hast, uh, thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. Can you, can you see uh, what a hard thing this must have been for this young man? Uh, let me read on and we'll get some intelligence uh, uh, as, uh, as to what I'm about to say. In verse 23, and when he heard this, uh, he was very sorrowful for he was very, very rich. Uh, well, you got to understand now, uh, Jesus said, sell all that you have uh, and distribute it to the poor. Then you will have treasures in heaven. Uh, 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 well, uh, that would be hard for anything. Uh, the, the humble things that I have here. Uh, if Jesus said, well, sell it all and, and uh, move to another town, I could probably do that. That wouldn't be too bad. Uh, or if he said, sell all and invest uh, uh, over here and, uh, or sell all and, and put it in the bank and save it. But if he said, uh, sell all and then give it to the poor, that, that throws another uh, a picture on the whole thing. Uh, what are you saying? Uh, if you sell all, reinvest it, it's still yours. That's doable. If you, but if he tells you to sell all and give it to the poor, that means 
when you get through giving them out, giving out, you don't have anything. So I can understand and sympathize with this man, and even Jesus sympathized with him. And and we'll read uh, uh, how Jesus, well, the words of Jesus here in just a, just a moment. But uh, can you understand? That would be hard for any of us to do. Uh, this was a rich man, uh, and uh, most of uh, uh, most people, and I, I don't know uh, your financial background or anything of that nature, but uh, most of us live a, an average life here in the United States. Uh, if you live in a, a comfortable house and you have a decent car to drive, all oh, that's good, you know. Uh, but whatever we have and how humble we live, it would be hard for us to give it up. Uh, but if you're very, very rich, if you got money uh, in the uh, 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 laid up in the bank and uh, uh, your car is not just an ordinary car but a nice car, uh, your house is not just a, an ordinary house but a really nice house, uh, imagine this if you please. Uh, can can you imagine if you were asked to sell it all and give it to the poor, what would that make you feel? Even with the things that you have, if you're not a rich person, just a humble person, and, and, and the things you have are not lavish, it would be hard for most folks to do it and, and not even be rich. It would be hard for them to give up everything, sell it all, and give it to the poor. Now, we could, it would, we can we can justify it on selling some of it or getting rid of some of it to, and, and giving to the poor. Uh, you know what we'll do. We'll start talking about, nah, 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 Jesus, I can't help everybody. And, uh, I, I can only do what I can do, but if Jesus said, give it all, sell it all, give it to the poor, he wants you to do it. Now, now this is not a commandment for everybody. Jesus is not telling everybody to sell everything they have and, and give it to the poor, uh, but he did tell this man, um, and Jesus could give you a direct commandment, uh, that uh, something that he wants you to do, uh, that he's not asking everybody else to do. Uh, can you do it, or will you do it? Uh, will you part with everything that you have for him? Uh, or would, uh, you know, uh, it could be something even even uh, much smaller than that, but are you willing to do what Jesus uh, asked you to do, or uh, uh, tells you to do? Uh, would you do it without doubting? Uh, well, uh, shall we read in verse 23, this man, when he heard this, he he was very sorrowful, for he was rich. He was very rich. Verse 24, uh, and when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, uh, he said, uh, with what difficulty, with what difficulty shall they that have riches uh, enter into the kingdom of God? Uh, well, he didn't say it was impossible, but he said it was very difficult uh, to enter into the kingdom of God uh, uh, being very rich. Uh, well, verse 25, uh, for it is easier for a camel to go through uh, a needle's eye uh, than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, now that's very hard and, and we find people when they try to justify that verse and uh, uh, they uh, go to start talking about a gate in Israel that uh, they call the needle where a camel, uh, he had to get down on his knees and crawl through the gate to get through all of that kind of stuff. But I believe Jesus said a needle. Uh, it would be hard. That, 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 that's, that, that, that's impossible in our mind. Uh, Jesus, uh, I believe he chose something that is impossible to do uh, so that we can fathom what he's talking about. Uh, with difficulty uh, shall they they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 25, for it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter uh, uh, to uh, to enter the kingdom of God. Uh, well, you got to understand something here. Uh, Jesus did not say it was impossible. Uh, he just gave a comparison. Uh, so you have to understand, and Jesus will talk about it here. Uh, uh, let's read 26 and 27. Uh, and they say, and they that heard it said, uh, Who then can be saved? Uh, verse 27. Uh, and he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. In other words, when God is in the equation, he can make the impossible possible. In our minds, it would be it would be 
very difficult for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of, of God, Jesus said it's not it's not impossible. Uh, but but uh, you got to understand, uh, it may be impossible for a man to do it, uh, but it's not impossible for God. Uh, verse 27, let me reread it. Uh, and he said that the things which are impossible with men uh, are possible with God. Uh, so you have to understand when God is in the equation. Uh, and I wouldn't want you or anyone else to start blasting rich folks and, and, and start saying that uh, no rich folk don't go to heaven. That, that's not even, that's not the truth. Uh, that's not the truth at all. Uh, there's some people that are very wealthy and God made them that way. Uh, <coughs> God has a way of blessing people especially when they do the right thing with their money. Uh, well, uh, well, let me bring it to you like this. Uh, it's not a blessing if you if you get wealthy uh, and you got it through ill-gotten means. Uh, that's not a blessing. God didn't do that. Uh, if you got rich uh, hurting other people, uh, God didn't do that. You did it. Uh, uh, or uh, I could say Satan possibly energized you to do it. Uh, but God did not do it. That's not a blessing from God. But there's some people that God makes wealthy uh, just because uh, they do whatever they can for him. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, everybody's not uh, legitimate and everybody don't do the right thing. There's a lot of folks, even in the name of religion, in the name of our Lord, uh, uh, are uh, overdoing it. And I would not uh, uh, point my finger at this one or point my finger at that one. But I also believe that God has a way of, of blessing his people. Uh, and uh, uh, so you you can't say that just because someone is wealthy that uh, they're not going to go to heaven or they're not saved. Uh, I, I tell you, and I've said this before, uh, as we studied the gospel of St. Saint, uh, Saint Matthew, uh, I have certainly seen people that uh, were very, very wealthy that had a humble heart and a humble attitude, uh, and they had they had plenty of money, uh, uh, more than uh, possible, uh, well, I, I, I can't put an amount with it, but more than the average person could even fathom, uh, but yet they had a a humble attitude and they treated people well uh, and they they loved the Lord Jesus Christ and they did all they could for the kingdom of God uh, and uh, 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 yet maintain that humility uh, as a Christian uh, and then I've seen people that didn't have a dime didn't have no money and, and they thought they were better than everybody else uh, had some kind of chip on their shoulder whatever the case may be uh, well I'm trying to tell you uh, without God <coughs> Without God in the equation, uh, the, the, the very rich is not going to be saved. Uh, without God in the equation, uh, the very poor is not going to be saved. Uh, without God in the, in the equation, the ones in the middle are not going to be saved. Uh, but when God gets in the equation, uh, when you bring God into the picture, uh, he's able to change the heart uh, of the very, very wealthy. Uh, he's able to change the heart of the very, very poor. Uh, and let me let you know something. It's not easy. Uh, to live the life uh, of Christ being very, very poor. Because why? You don't have the things you need. Uh, it's easy to see something that you want and, and go and take it without buying it. Uh, but when you have the love of God down in your heart, uh, you're not going to do it the wrong way. Uh, you, God will bless you with it and he can bless you with whatever you ask him for. Uh, but if you've got the, the presence and the, the spirit of God dwelling down in you, uh, you won't do it the wrong way to get whatever it is. Uh, that you need. Uh, same way on the other hand, uh, when you really love the Lord uh, and do all that you can to please him, uh, he has a way of multiplying what you have. Uh, he's got a way of, of giving you more than you could expect. Uh, well, you might go down to buy yourself a Ford and he might put you uh, uh, in a luxury car. Uh, you might go down to buy yourself a, a, you, you know, a, a small little two-bedroom house, whatever the case may be. Uh, he might put you in a four or five-bedroom house. I don't know. God is able to do that. And let me let me bring it down here. I don't want you to think uh, that walking and, and living for Jesus is all about things. Uh, things are only temporary. Uh, houses and cars are, are only temporary. Uh, I told you on the other day, God has blessed me with more than one. Uh, and, I, and I thank God for it. Uh, but that stuff is going to perish. Uh, everything that you have one of these days is going to perish. Uh, so it's not about what you have. Uh, it's not about how much 
you have. It's about what you have in your heart. Do you have Jesus? Do you have the love of God in your heart? Do you have com com compassion for those less fortunate than you? Well, uh, uh, let me move on here. Uh, I do want you to get the picture. I, I don't want you to be uh, uh, angry at folks with money. That's the wrong spirit. Uh, and I don't want you to look down on folks that don't have money. Uh, that's the wrong spirit. Uh, all of us belong to God, uh, and, and one is not better than the other. Uh, I don't care if he had, he's multi-million or billionaire, whatever the case may be. He's no better than the one with nothing. Uh, God loves us all. Uh, so it's not our job to, to, to condemn the one that has made uh, uh, great successes in finance in the financial realm, nor is it ours to condemn the one uh, that don't have anything. Uh, we're supposed to love everybody. Uh, we're supposed to put our arms around everyone, uh, the one that has and the one that does not have. Uh, we should have the love of God in our heart, uh, to love all of humanity, uh, regardless to what race, what creed, what color, a uh, financial background. Uh, we should love them. Uh, now that's the word of the Lord. Well, let me read a couple of more verses. Well, <clears throat> as we go on to verse 28, then Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or parent, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, and in the age to come, life everlasting. You grab a hold of that. Grab it, grasp it, grasp it, grasp it. I don't care what you give up for the Lord. Jesus said, whatever you give, now he went down the whole list. If you leave your house, if you leave your parents, if you leave your brother, and if you leave your wife, I'm not telling you to leave your wife. I'm not telling you to leave your husband. Uh, but Jesus is making a point. Uh, whatever you sacrifice for the kingdom of God, uh, whatever you give up for the kingdom of God, uh, well, you're going to receive um, manifold more. Let's read verse 30. Uh, whosoever shall re whoso. Uh, who shall not receive uh, manifold more in this present time? Uh, most of the time we look toward heaven and we know that there were going to be great blessings in heaven and uh, the streets are paved with gold and all of our needs and, and our wants to be uh, supplied for us when we get to heaven. But Jesus said, uh, who, who shall not receive manifold more in this present present time. Uh, that means right down here. Uh, that means right here, 2012. Uh, right here, whatever month that you're listening to this. Uh, well, if you, whatever you give up for the kingdom of God, uh, whether that be a few dollars or, or a great amount, uh, whether that's a, a, a moving to another town where you have to leave your, your family or, or, or your, your parents, if that's going anywhere, doing anything for the kingdom of God, uh, you're going to receive manifold more in this present time. That means now and in the age to come, life everlasting. Well, our goal is to make it to heaven where we're going to live forever. <coughs> Please excuse me. Have everlasting life. That's our goal. But thank God for the fringe benefits. He'll bless me right down here in this world, in this present time. He will give me more than what I give up. Well, my time is rapidly coming to a close for this session. But I want you to know I love you, my friends. I love you with the love of the Lord. If you would like to contact me for any reason, if you would like to send a tax-deductible gift to this ministry, you can write me 3741 Candle Bluff Drive, San Antonio, Texas, 78244. You can also reach me at my website, www.poems, poems by Chester. Dot com. Poems by Chester dot com. Remember, I love you, my friends, with the love of the Lord. God bless you.